Areas and Rooms, Area Objects. All right, so now we want to make area objects. All right, so let's go to our area plans that we made right here. We'll start with the gross building and we'll go to our main floor. And let's just turn off the grids and some other things. It's just causing a lot of noise here. So I'm going to go to VV for visibility graphics. First of all, I'm going to go to Revit links. I'm just going to turn off the Revit links in this view. And then I'm going to go to grids and turn off grids. So VV annotation, G is for grids. There it is there. Okay, that makes it a little bit clearer. Now, what it did is when it created the boundary, it automatically created an area object. So this is the sort of the footprint boundary for this particular level. Okay, now if I go over here to the rentable area plan, main floor, and I'll just sort of do the same here. I'll turn off some things, just refine the view a little bit as we go. Just adjusting the crop region, first of all. Okay, and then VV. Revit links and G for grids. Okay. Now, I don't think it's showing there. There's no tag on it right now, but if we just sort of hover around here, there likely is an area object. So I'm just going to click on area and then area object. Now you see what happens? It's finding the boundary lines that were created. We'll just drop that one in there. So I'll click on it. Hit escape. So now there's an area for that one. Okay, now I'm going to go to rentable option two. Main floor, main floor, there we go. No area object in here yet. Okay, so if I go to area and then this area, it's actually the area object. Notice what's happening. It's finding that as an area, that as an area. Now you can put two areas on the same place. Problem is, Revit's not going to let you finish it. It's going to actually get you to delete one of them. So if I click on delete area, there's no choice there. So it had to get rid of that particular area. I'll hit escape. Okay, so we're in rentable option two, and we're going to do some stuff here. So first of all, let's just clean up this view as well. So we'll turn off the link, VV, Revit links, turn them off. Go to the grids, turn those off. And okay. Okay, so now let's add some area boundaries and then let's draw some area boundaries. So I'll add another one there and that's good. So if I click on architecture, area, area, okay, notice this, now I can put one in there. Now we had talked earlier about maybe perhaps chopping it up if they wanted to, maybe they're not quite ready on this area, they wanna rent it out or just see future scenarios. Well, that's what this is for, this is an option too. And you can just pick on these lines, drag them down. You don't even have to conform to the walls that are there. So I could say, let's go with an area boundary. And then I'll just actually use these tools right here, the draw tools. And I could say, well, maybe we'll chop this up, you know, for future development. And uh, let's see what that scenario looks like. You know, perhaps we're going to rent some exhibition space right here or some advertising. Okay, we'll add in another area. So there's one there, there's one there, and then there's one there. So the point being, you can draw these area boundary lines wherever you want. They don't have to be on walls. The only difference is the ones that you use, like if I go to area boundary and I pick a wall, if I actually pick a wall and put on the area onto that object, the line will move with the wall. Whereas the lines that I'm drawing here, they're just, they are where they are. You'd have to move them yourself. So we can rename these areas. It's really similar to rooms. If you click on an area object, which is like a room object, you can call this, um, let's say, garage. And then this one here. Maybe this is just going to be in phase one. They're just going to make it as storage. And we'll call this one exhibition. Now, I'm having a hard time actually picking on that little object that's there. I might just window it, filter and then just get the area, the area object. Okay, there we go. So this might be exhibition space right now. And maybe there's gonna be some more stuff out here. So I'll just do the same thing. I'm gonna to go to architecture, area boundary, 
draw a line and you know maybe this whole wall down right all the way down to here is going to also be exhibition space okay area drop that in there move the tag now i can just edit the tag and call this exhibition I double click on the tag and it opens it up in the family editor. Don't want that. It's something that they brought in in 2013. Just double click slowly and I'll call this one for circulation. This space right here actually should be chopped up. So if I go to architecture, area boundary line, just go right across to there. And this whole area is going to be circulation as well. Area object there. Double click slowly. It's called circ. Okay, so that's our option two. Let's go back to the rentable, just the rentable option. And I'll just start clicking on area boundary first. And then I can just click on the walls that are there. This is it. I'm not really doing anything extra. Now I click by accident on that side. I'm just going to delete the line. Go to area boundary again and it should just pick that up there we go it's picking up the object and that's really it now we did divide up this space here there's a separation line that we can pick so you can actually pick room separation lines as well and that's it okay so now we can add in areas okay so one there one there one there one there one there one there and then we actually have to extend this one right across Good, and then we add another area right there. Hit escape. Okay, so we have our three versions done. And again, the gross building is the gross building. And that's only for the main floor. I mean, there's also the foundation area or some basement area as well that we could work with. But for now, I think we're at a good spot. Okay, so I'm gonna just have rentable option two main floor open. Save that. Okay, and then we can close. And that concludes this lesson.